Welcome to Michigan 4 H Children's Garden Butterfly Lab. My name is Ms. Jessica, and today we are going to talk all about butterflies. So, today in the lab, we're going to investigate the butterfly life cycle. We're going to take a look at the butterfly anatomy. We're also going to take a really close look at butterflies underneath the microscope. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is the life cycle of the butterfly. And we should be able to see three of the four stages in the butterfly life cycle. So this will help us re-familiarize ourselves with what the life cycle is and to help us know what to look for. So the first stage of the life cycle is an egg. And when we're thinking about a butterfly egg, it's not the size of a chicken egg. It's teeny tiny. It's about the size of a period at the end of the sentence. And we're looking for eggs. We're always going to look for butterfly eggs on plants. All butterflies lay their eggs on plants, and they don't lay their eggs on just any plant. They lay their eggs on very special plants called a host plant because they know that the next stage of the life cycle is going to be a very quick eater. So I'm going to put the first stage of the life cycle, the egg, right here. Now out of that egg is going to hatch a very hungry caterpillar. And when that caterpillar hatches out, it's about the size of an eyelash. And so that caterpillar only has one job in its whole life. And that number one job is to eat. It actually eats so much that it has to split its skin five times. And when it's ready for the next stage, it's going to make a J. Now, the next stage of the life cycle is called a chrysalis. And a chrysalis is different from a cocoon. And that's why they have two different names. So a chrysalis is what a butterfly makes. And that chrysalis is actually made in the butterfly's body in its last stage. And then when it's ready, it pulls off that caterpillar skin to reveal the chrysalis within. So a butterfly makes a chrysalis on the inside and a cocoon is made by spinning a silken thread on the outside of the caterpillar body. So that's why they have two different names. So the next stage is a chrysalis and this is the cozy home where the caterpillar is going to go through the process of metamorphosis. And metamorphosis means that this animal is going to go through a complete change. It's going into the chrysalis with a mouth that chews leaves, 16 legs, and it's going to come out as a butterfly. So the final stage of our life cycle is the butterfly. And when this butterfly comes out, the first thing that it has to do is stretch. So you guys, you give me a stretch too. When you're sitting there, stretch out like you're, you're stretching your butterfly wings. They also have to dry their wings off. And we're in the butterfly house today. We're going to be able to see some butterflies that are hanging drying their wings and stretching them out. So today we're going to be able to see hungry caterpillars, cozy chrysalis homes, and we're going to be able to see lots and lots of butterflies. Now let's take a look at our butterfly's anatomy. So an, the anatomy tells us about the parts of our animal's body. And a butterfly is a special kind of animal called an insect. Now insects all have some things in common. And some of those things include that they have three parts to their body. They have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. They have six legs. Our butterfly has four wings. So on our illustration here, it kind of looks like it only has two wings, but it actually has two wings on the top. These are called the four wings. That means that they're in the front, and they have two wings in the back. Those are called the hind wings. Let's take a closer look up here at the head. On our butterfly's head, they have these specialized organs called antenna, and the antenna help our butterfly to hear and to smell. These antenna are special to butterflies because they have these knobs or clubs on the ends. That's distinctive to butterflies. Only butterflies have knobs on the ends of their antenna. So if we're trying to decide if it's a moth or a butterfly, if it's a butterfly, it's going to have those knobs, and if it's a moth, their antenna tend to look like a feather at the top of their head. On our butterfly's head, we'd also be able to see compound eyes. So these specialized eyes help our butterfly to see. Now instead of having two eyes like we do, butterflies have thousands of eyes. And Dr. Norm is going to put a special lens on our camera so you can see like a butterfly would see. So each one of those little squares in there is called a facet, like in a diamond. And so butterflies see much differently than we humans do with their compound eyes. The next part on their head that we're going to take a look at is their mouth part. 
Now, butterflies don't have any teeth. They just have a long, curly tongue called a proboscis. And that proboscis looks just like one of these. So when a butterfly is flying around looking for a flower, it keeps its tongue tucked up by its head. But when it lands and it's ready to sip some nectar, it pushes that tongue out to sip the nectar up. Now we're going to take an even closer look at butterflies underneath the microscope with some digital pictures that we took. Here we see our butterfly's head. One of the key parts of our butterfly's head are the compound eyes. As we look at the eyes, we can see that they wrap around the head so our butterfly can see in front, behind, and to the side. This microscope photo shows us a picture of our butterfly's thorax. As you can see, our butterfly's thorax has lots of hair on it. This hair helps this butterfly to be a great pollinator. Here we see the butterfly's abdomen. These two pictures show that they come in different sizes, shapes, and colors. Here we see our butterfly antenna. As we talked about before, you can see on these pictures the distinct clubs or knobs on the ends of each antenna. Here are the butterfly legs. One of the really interesting things about butterflies is that they taste with their feet. Can you imagine having to taste your lunch with your feet? But this is helpful for butterflies as they land from leaf to leaf and flower to flower. On this picture of a giant swallowtail, we see its long curly proboscis that it uses to sip nectar. Here is what we probably think of most when we think of beautiful butterflies, the wings. We can see here that their wings are made of teeny tiny little scales. And these aren't like fishy scales, they're actually tiny pieces of powder that cover the butterfly's wings and help give it design, decoration, and also is what makes it fly. Here we see an example of the top of the butterfly and the bottom and how much different they are. This is common in most types of butterflies where the design and pattern on the top is different than the bottom. This can help to camouflage the butterfly. It could help for defense, but it's something common that we see in most butterflies. We'll head into the butterfly house now and Dr. Norm's gonna take you guys out to our vine that's painted on our head house floor that leads our visitors into the butterfly house. And while we're walking down the vine, see if you can spot any butterflies painted on the floor. Lots of flowers, of course, because that's where butterflies get their food. The tropical plants in here are because it's so warm. It's about 90 degrees in here right now. It's really nice and hot. Um, butterflies like it hot, so we try to keep it warm in here so they continue to fly around and move. One of the first stops that we're going to make while we're here in the flight house is to our chrysalis cage. Our butterflies are sent to us in the mail in the chrysalis stage. We get 150 butterflies a week and we hang them up in this glass case. So they're hung in here and this is where they'll hatch. And then when they're ready to emerge and fly, we open this up and then the butterflies are released. Here are lots of different kinds of butterflies. We have about a dozen different kinds of this week. And this is a really cool illustration. We can see this monarch just hatched out of this chrysalis. You can see it's empty. 
And then this one's turning a dark black color. We can actually see the wing inside of there. So as it gets ready to hatch, it becomes translucent so we can see through it. And then this is usually what they look like when they come to us. So we can kind of see the wing, but you can really see the gold in this beautiful jade color. So this is um, kind of the three stages of a monarch hatching out of its chrysalis. And then let's take a closer look at what a chrysalis actually looks like when it's empty. So here we can see this is an empty chrysalis and it's just like a piece of paper. It's a shell that this animal was in to go through its metamorphosis. And then when it's out, it's just like a papery shell. Now on the bottom of the cage, I know it looks kind of yucky on there. This is actually uh, butterfly poop. This is the um, first uh, poop for our butterfly. It's the same as an adult. It's called meconium. And so um, this is just their first poop on here. So don't be scared. Um, we can see some butterflies that have just hatched out today. And they're w drying their wings, stretching their wings and getting ready to fly. A lot of these are empty. So all of these have already been hatched. Um, which is great. We're getting another shipment in two days, so we should have lots and lots of butterflies. On this side, there's a beautiful butterfly called a malachite. And that's a Florida native butterfly. It's such a cool butterfly. It's like a neon green. You're seeing the underside of the wings, um, but when it opens its wings, it's just such a beautiful green color. This is a Julia butterfly. This is also another Florida native. We well, can see the proboscis. We can see those really cool eyes, the knobbed antenna. Such a beautiful butterfly. When it hangs upside down, it almost looks like a leaf. Here he goes. Now, let's go over and see if we can find some tunnel here. Oh, there's a buckeye butterfly right here. Let's get its wings open. That's those beautiful eye spots. This is a Mich that's a Michigan native butterfly. caterpillar right here. This is a painted lady caterpillar. This one's about five days old. It's getting pretty big. When it came to us, it was about the size of an eyelash, teeny, teeny, tiny. And so it's been eating and eating and eating. And in about two days, it's going to be big enough to make its chrysalis. So um, that's what our uh, our caterpillars look like right now as our butterflies mate and lay eggs here in the butterfly house. We'll have lots more caterpillars. This plant back here is called Lantana. This is one that butterflies really, really like. Um, it has lots of nectar, perfect butterfly flower shape. Um, so they tend to really like that type of plant. I'm going to get some nectar on my finger. We have these nectar bowls around, and it's just honey and water. So we just have this here for butterfly. So when we want to get butterflies on our finger, we can pretend like we're flowers. So we'll walk around and see if we can find a butterfly to get on our finger. There is a, a visitor back here that we're going to show you. Looks like he's sleeping. There's a little tree frog that's hanging out right there. 
they're welcome and unwelcome at times. They they like butterflies, so they kind of hang out in here and wait for butterflies to land and then have a snack. That's called a peacock butterfly. It's kind of hard to see. than others. So some of them are super docile and you can pick them right up and others just tend to want to fly around. We can look at the shape of the flowers that butterflies prefer on this flower right here. These are petunias and butterflies tend to like flowers that have these long tubes at the base of the flower so they can stick their mouth part down their proboscis down there and sip the nectar. Really good close up of that compound eye. It's curly mouth part and those antenna. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today on our virtual butterfly field trip. We hope to see you again soon in person. Thanks.